Well. Jeremy sure. Vine has joined campaigners in urging drivers Ooh. to put safety stickers. What's that? That was a little cycle bell. Like this on their wing mirrors to remind bell. them to watch out for cyclists. If you hear a bell, watch out. Yeah, and that sticker is what you should hopefully remind drivers to be aware of a cyclist. But is it up to drivers to protect cyclists? Manchester cabbie John Considine says it's on bike riders to be more aware of their surroundings. But co-founder of the Stop Killing Cyclists campaign, Danica McCarthy, disagrees, saying it's the responsibility of those behind the wheel to keep those on two wheels safe. Why should it be down to the motorists, Danica? Well, it's down to all road users to use the road safely and sanely. However, it is only drivers who actually have the power to kill other road users. Cyclists cannot. So therefore, the more responsibility lies on the driver. Um, something like 70% of drivers close pass, 50% of drivers break the speed limit, and 30% of drivers use mobile phones. I was cycling to my friends on Sunday, two drivers swanning down Notting Hill Lake, looking at their mobile phone, driving their Land Rover. They should be looking after cyclists and, and the road, not be looking mm. at their phones. John? Well, I agree with Donica in, to a certain extent, but we don't need any more legislation that drivers have to drive safely, as cyclists also have mm. to obey the rules of the road. And at the moment, if I hit a cyclist, then there's going to be a serious accident. But if a cyclist hits me, then he just cycles away. And mm. I've left with a damaged vehicle and, and all the everything else that goes along with that. So there should be, like Donica says, there should be some agreement, really, where mm. all road users are safe, isn't it? And separating mm. drivers and cyclists, mm. probably the way to go. But also, should there not be training for cyclists where they can go... Or should they have a sticker that says, beware, I'm going to do something crazy? A lot of our viewers have said they've had so many near misses and crashes because the cyclist is wafted across a few, few lanes, gone through red lights. We live in London. Uh, we see that a lot. So where does the pressure for cyclists to take responsibility for other road users uh, As come I from? said, we are all responsible for cycling on the road, for using roads safely. Uh, however, the... the this, this, this uh, red light canard needs to be put to bed. 99% of people who get killed by people breaking the red light are killed by drivers breaking the red light. Coming here this morning, a scaffolding tr truck drove straight through the red light and endangered my life. So the, but the, the other point John, John made is really important. We do need to separate cyclists from, from, from motorists. In Holland, 70% of kids cycle to school. And they do it safely, 2% in Britain. And we pay a huge price for our kids' health by not doing that. And the government has cut almost all funding for low traffic neighbourhoods and almost all funding for cycle lanes. We are way behind Europe on separating drivers from cyclists. We have a tricky city to do that in London, as does Manchester, as to other parts of the world, doesn't it? No, our campaign, Stop Killing Cyclists, campaign for real cyclist lanes in London, and we've been putting them in. And the exciting thing is now, something like a third third of the journeys taken by Tube are taken by bike in London. That's a big success because they're starting to build cycle. Uh, most of the journey I cycled here this morning to the studio, I'd say around 70% of my journey was on separated cycle lanes in John, London. do you think as a driver, do cycle lanes and um, the different road furniture, different traffic lights for cyclists, for you as a driver, does that, does that make things better and safer? Well, I'm all for safety because obviously we don't want people to die on the streets, but... It's, it's having the cyclists to observe what's there for them, to help right. them that where they have to stop, where they don't go. OK, the red lights is a big example, isn't it? We've all seen cyclists mm. go through red lights. But there's also, like you say, the street furniture, there's ways of separating the cyclists away from the car. So it's Lots of cabbies it complain about that to me, but, but, but do you like but what it? What can you do? You have to keep people safe. It's not that I like it, it's just that you appreciate people have to be safe. And cyclists on the road have to have to then have a right mm. to be on the road the same as everybody else. But you see them going down the pavement, you're walking down the pavement and the cyclist coming towards you. Also, there's a very new dangerous breed of cyclist, which is the delivery cyclist mm. who's cycling commercially. Mm. Well, I drive commercially on the streets and I have to pay licence fees, insurance. These cyclists Is that have, the answer, do you think? Some kind of enforced highway code, like a driving test, some kind of insurance responsibility? The, the electric bikes seem to go so quickly that it's the same speed as, like, a, a scooter mm. that you would have to take a CBT 
test for, no, but don't. there's no regulation, <clears throat> there's no test. Yes, there are regulations. Uh, E-bikes can only legally go 15 miles per hour. Actually, we would love for drivers and cyclists to have the same rules on speed. What we would need is for drivers to have speed limits in their car so they can't break the speed limit. Would you be, would you be in favour of that? Well, we have a 20 a mile an hour speed limit now no, in but city centres. Would you centers. be in favour of a car having an equipment that prevents it physically from going breaking the speed limit? We're going to carry on this debate in the studio. Unfortunately, 